Excellency, high personality of this summit, the authorities of Pakistan, Dr. Muhammad Saeed Amin Khan, Ambassador, and the World Chairman of the International Human Rights Commission, all the participants in the summit. Thank the member of the board of the International Human Rights Commission for inviting me to take part in this event with eminent personalities of the world to discuss about Together, we have the power to reshape the world, new prosperous world for humanity, with important subthemes to be analyzed. I'm very impressed for the work that the International Human Rights Commission is doing in the field of human rights protection. And today, International Human Rights Commission, as an intergovernmental organization, is became an important actor of dialogue fighting for peace in the world. I will focus my keynote on peace, justice, security, and development. Peace, justice, security, and development. It is increasingly recognized that there exists a relationship between peace, justice, security, and the development. Peace and justice influence a country's development process. Development provides well-being to the population. A country that experiences no economic, social, and the social development cannot claim welfare and justice and the human rights. These factors are integrated, which means ensuring national peace, justice, and security in order to support the development process that leads to social being. Some examples of security threats to nation for peace international and internal terrorism like in my continent in Sahel, Somalia, Mali, Libya, Niger, etc., etc. Climate risk, no water, no land, organized crime, fraud, drugs, money laundering, piracy, hostage taking, human trafficking, food security, war and displacement caused by conflicts. There are some causes that menace peace and justice when a state finds internal territory to control all liberty. Dictatorial regime, a country whose governmental system is dictatorial or total, total reason, deprive its population from their right and they prevent freedom of expression. Injustice, exclusion, discrimination, and the corruption. A state engaged in such practice cause disorders and the sessions rebellion and the coup d'etat attempts, these are countries where the population does not trust its leaders. Political instability, economic and financial difficulties. A country whose economy is bad will struggle to confront the population discontent. Economic difficulty might felt in commodity security and the rising price. And today, our continent is facing the problem of COVID-19 that is very difficult to find a vaccine, to pay for a vaccine for the population. And the river lease between ethnic groups, different religions, belief, and the ideologies. Last election related violence, pre-elections, during the elections, post-elections, examples in Kenya, Burundi, Central Africa, et cetera, et cetera. How to address those problems of insecurity and to build the peace and the justice? First, strengthening good governance, which means efficiency of institutions, transparency, accountability, inclusion, and the participations. Democratization, second, to ensure freedom, respect for human rights, dignity, creativity, trust, and mutual respect. Third, Improving life condition of population, human and social security of people, creating jobs in front promoting business, economic development, economic growth, enable government to implement programs and the projects, economic activity make countries able to meet social needs of the population. 
And what should be the role of International Human Rights Commission to prevent and end the conflicts and bring peace and justice? Today, we need to innovate and define the new tools to understand the problems of our times in order to prevent some conflict that can menace the peace in the world. As an institution, the International Human Rights Commission can play a very important role in preventing conflicts by promoting dialogue between people, communities based on some principles. So understand its philosophy, we can bring together key forces, process institutions involved in the peace building and the reconciliation in order to contribute for enhancing dialogue and the building confidence to solve some conflicts in order to bring peace. Tomorrow begins today. Today, the global crisis that the world is to, and we must to take immediate action. Young people can play an important role in promoting culture of peace and non-violence. Thanks for your attention, and I wish a great success to the summit. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Excellency Prime.